Hey, welcome to Product Coffee. One of the questions I've been hearing a lot lately is, what's it like to make that transition from Senior Product Manager to Director of Product Management? So we put together a panel of four product management leaders to talk about that very subject. They'll share some of the things that they've learned along the way as well as how they made that leap to begin with. But before we get started, I want to remind you, if you like what we're doing here at Product Coffee, go ahead and hit subscribe to our channel right now and hit the like button on this video so that we know we're on the right track. So to get started, I want to introduce you to Lisa Black, our moderator for the panel today, and she'll introduce you to the rest of the team. Lisa comes to us with a very extensive history in product management. She's been with Oracle, Kronos, and Deloitte, to name just a few. She's managed products in human capital management, and experience analytics as well as customer experience software. So she's got a great background, has made that transition from individual contributor to leader herself, and has a really good perspective to lead our discussion today. So for now, let's let Lisa take it away. Lisa? Thanks, Jason, for that great introduction. So we have four fantastic panelists today. It was uh, definitely interesting reading everybody's bios and seeing some overlap. So uh, we have Kelly Jones from what is now Ultimate Kronos Group. Uh, so when I worked at Kronos, they were not yet merged. But for those of you who follow the human capital management industry, Ultimate and Kronos recently merged. Um, and Kelly is a senior director of product. We also have uh, Robert. Robert Elliott, who is now a senior director with uh, Globant, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. And Robert and I actually work together at Home Depot. Um, and so that's also an interesting connection there. Uh, another graduate of Georgia Tech's MBA program. So a uh, little plug for their program. Um, then we have Jahana Zeb Jabbar from the Home Depot, and he's worked uh, to do innovative things in crowded spaces in retail and financial services. And lastly, we have Brian, but not least, Brian Huss from Cox Automotive. And Brian is a senior director of product leading a fairly large team of 25 product managers working on things that we would probably recognize as consumers, auto trader, and Kelly Blue Book. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our first question. Um, and we're going to try to keep us, like Jason said, we're going to try to leave some time at the end for audience questions. So I'm going to do this as a, as a bit of a round robin. Um, and with the first question, I'm going to ask each of our panelists to briefly describe the moment that they transitioned from that individual contributor product manager to, to director and to highlight whether it was intentional or whether it was by accident. So we'll go out of order and I'm actually going to start with uh, Jahan Azeb, if you can go first. Hello, everyone. Thanks for the opportunity uh, to speak with you today. Uh, so the, um, the opportunity to make the jump to director uh, was... Uh, was by design and by plan. Um, it was at my last company at American Express, where um, I was I was in a really messy space. Uh, there there were some um, issues with a product that had grown too fast, and I raised my hand to to go and and fix things. And um, the the interesting part was everyone was running away from this product suite, and I was running into it. Um, so, you know, I guess you could say like I was kind of the micro of, of trying to go in and, and clean up, uh, clean up this mess. And, uh, pretty soon, um, I ran out of people, uh, to help me and they had to, they had to promote me and, and let me, um, hire a team. Um, so, uh, I guess the, the, the lesson learned there was, um, just, just try to do the right thing to protect the brand and, and protect the company. And uh, that grew into my first product director job. And I've had several since. Yeah, no, I think that's really interesting how you describe it as like running towards the messy, messy space and a, a great metaphor with uh, Mike Rowe, for those of you who maybe uh, never saw his show, Dirty Jobs, uh, uh, you know, had a definite reputation as somebody who, a cleaner and a cleanup of things. So uh, that was a great metaphor. Um, I know that the responsibilities can differ vastly between organizations, even within the same company, uh, for what it means to be a director of product management. So, you know, if each of the panelists can speak a little bit to what 
do you consider the scope of responsibility to be for a product management director? How do you, when you hear product management director, and if you think of your role, how would you uh, explain that scope of responsibility to our audience? So for this one, let's start with Brian. Yeah, I'd say when you uh, when you become a director, you start to think about the uh, you know you think about your team, uh, you know, uh, kind of on the in the in the same way that you think about the uh, like a product that you might be managing individually. You've got to be uh, just as relentless around uh, you know making sure that the team has what they need to be successful, and you know bringing about the uh, you know the conditions and doing the, doing that level of coaching uh, that you would do when you're working on an individual product in terms of understanding your consumer and making sure that you're ready to. Uh, you know that that the, that level of the team has everything to succeed. You know, I think a, a, you, you can often find yourself, uh, especially when you're getting started as a director, in uh, kind of a player coach role that you sometimes have to do. Uh, you know, you're still doing some individual contribution while continuing to to grow and uh, you know grow and develop the uh, the skills of the team. Um, you know, I think a key thing to understand is to really focus on making sure that your team. Uh, that your team knows how to pri uh, knows how to prioritize, and that uh, uh, you know, just and just that the, the just that the relationship and the power dynamic has changed. Especially if you're going from you know previously being someone's peer to being, being their manager, uh, you, you have to just be just be really really uh, you're really conscious of that and making sure that the team doesn't just doesn't just say they can take on work in the interest of uh, well my you know my boss wants me to do this so I'm going to do it. Uh, you've got to you've got to develop that level of trust. Uh, uh, you know, on both sides of the relationship and understanding your, uh, you know, your team as uh, individuals. You're going to have some people who uh, they're going to thrive if you give them some strategic uh, guidance and guardrails and then you just let them go. And there are other people who are actually going to going to welcome, you know, detailed intervention. Uh, the negative side of that can be micromanagement, but actually, uh, you know, giving you that, uh, giving them that, uh, that real level of focus and guidance and reassurance in in, uh, in what they're doing. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, I, th I think it's understanding the people as individuals and just really reviewing the, uh, the, team's, uh, the team's process and, and thoroughness of thought, even if the exact you know, tactic that someone's gonna take to solve a particular problem isn't the exact way that you, that you might do it, that, uh, just making sure they're thinking through it properly, I think is a big part of the job. I hope you're enjoying this episode. If you'd like to see how all of our guests answered all of the questions, you can find that right here on our YouTube channel as well. Just look for the link right up here at the top of your screen. But if you want to have even more fun, you can join us live on our Zoom call every week. Just go to productcoffee.com slash newsletter and sign up for invitations to each of our weekly virtual coffee meetups. We'd love to have you join us and get to know you too. Um, so this one will will change gears a little bit. I, I think you know certainly 2020 has been an interesting year. Uh, I have definitely done a lot of reflection. <laughs> um, it was very interesting job searching um, during a pandemic. Um, it's certainly not something that I necessarily would have thought I would be doing dur during a pandemic. Um, what was the most difficult aspect of the transition to director? I think we had some highlights of that, right? Going from that player to coach and sometimes still having to do both. But if, if each of you reflects back on that transition, um, and especially since some people made that transition a while ago and some people are newer to that transition, so maybe those you know, you're still facing those difficulties and figuring them out, what was the most difficult aspect and, and what did you learn from it or what was your takeaway as you reflect back on that transition? You know, how did it change you as, as a person or as a leader? So for that one, um, you know, maybe let's start with Robert since you're newer to that transition. And like you said, you kind of started in this role right before the pandemic. So you probably got thrown a lot of things that nobody could have could have predicted <laughs> from a leader or a transition perspective. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you said it, I mean, COVID, is my answer to that. I mean, <laughs> I was learning, you know, I think I was three weeks um, into my role when they really locked everything down. So I hadn't even really gotten to the rest of the clients in our portfolio. I'd only really met a couple of our clients um, and a couple of my team members in person. And then it went hundred percent remote from that point on um, learning the culture. Our company's based out of Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um, I was supposed to have flown down there to meet other leaders and other team members. And I didn't get to do that. Yeah. Um, so that that's been a, a real 
curveball. I, I think though, you know, I tried to, I, I, that's the obvious answer. I think everybody will have unique challenges related to the pandemic. For me, it's, it's, it's been time management. Um, I've found that I have to be more judicious with my time. Um, it, it's for me, I, I, I want to know the ins and outs of everything that is going on in my organization. I've really been a hands on roll up the sleeves type person in every role that I've had. And I've always had the bandwidth to do that. Um, but this is really the first time where my my, uh, I, I guess, available working hours is, is really being chewed up quickly. Um, my calendar is nuts. Um, things change very quickly because, you know, you, you elevate not at just a hierarchical level, but at, uh, I guess, the scope and scale of all the work that's going on in the organization. Changes happen fast and they can come from anywhere. Um, and so I found that I have to be really judicious with my time. I have to think, should I attend this meeting? You know, do I have time to do that? Or can I just have somebody get, you know, catch up with me afterwards? Or can we have a phone call? Um a lot of that has, has been a, a big challenge for me. And then um, making sure that I'm also engaged when I am in the meeting, that I'm prepared, um, that I do the pre-work. You know, I double, triple check my inbox. Have they sent me any documents? Am I prepared for this discussion? Um, because again, if your time is constrained, you've got to maximize the time that you are giving folks um, to make the meeting successful. Um, so it, it's been a an interesting challenge. I think COVID has, you know, forced more Zoom meetings um, on my calendar. There's some weeks where it's six to seven hours worth of meetings a day. Um, and then there's some weeks where it's like half the day. Um, but I found for the first time in my career, I actually have to start blocking off my calendar um, and carving out time to think and prepare for upcoming meetings. Um, I check in with folks, do one-on-ones, all that stuff as much as I can. Um, but yeah, I, I think the nuance to me that I'm learning, and as you said, as a, as a new leader, it, it I don't have an answer for it yet. I'm still kind of figuring it out, trial and error, um, or let's say hypothesis testing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but trying to trying to find out how I get the best return uh, for my team from my time. If you were to give yourself advice, your former self advice, right, as you think back um, and you look back on, you know, the journey throughout your career and different pivots or milestones, what advice would you give your former self, right? And that could either be, you know, six, eight, nine months ago, pre-pandemic, or could, that could be 10 years ago, right? Uh, Kelly, what about you? What, what advice would you give yourself? I can go back to challenging assumptions. If I think about that, that first leap early in my career, you know, I got promoted because I was doing really well. So I went off and I ran, right? Went off solving problems, but what, was I solving the right problems? Probably not. So kind of taking that step back and allowing yourself to get promoted and reset that expectations and understand what problems you're trying to solve, meet with your leader, understand what he or she thinks success is meet with your team, meet with stakeholders, understand you know what challenges are currently happening in the organization, meet with your customers, understand what they're trying to drive towards and just level setting. And then make sure you're you're aligned with you, the, the team around you and above you so that you're truly set up for success. Like I said, the, the biggest mistake you can make is what got you to that next level is continuing to do what you did to get to that level. You have to, to reset. And the best way to do that is ask lots of questions and do discovery within your organization to figure out what success looks like. So we did get a question um, that, thank you, Jason, for sending this to me. And any one of you can take it. We don't necessarily need everybody to answer this question. I think this is an interesting one about, you know, can you only get to that director level or next level from within an org or knowing the company, um, you know, or is it possible to be hired into that position from, say, being a senior product manager who has a lot of experience? Um, and is there anybody who wants to take that, that question? Because I, I think, you know, just reading about everybody's backgrounds, everybody's approached that differently. I know I've certainly taken leadership roles not having come from within an org, but then I, I've, all, I've done both. So I'm curious, you know, if anybody on the panel wants to take that, what you think of that? Um, yeah, I can jump in on that one. I th I, I'd say there's uh, there's definitely a, uh, you know, a career strategy where 
you know, let's say you get to the, uh, you know, the senior product manager level at a large company, and you then got the opportunity to get to a director level at a smaller company, uh, because, you know, they may be looking for, uh, you know, someone who's willing to grow with them. Uh, and, uh, you, you know, that, 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 Back and forth between you know larger places and smaller places as a way of uh, you know growing that level of opportunity. I, I think is definitely a, a strategy you can take. But the you know the, I'd say a key thing to do in that is when you're going to that smaller company and going after that director job, you know paint a picture for them of how you're going to help them. Of you know how you know do your research and really understand you know what do they need. Uh, you know, out of a product leader. And, um, you know, I, I've gone in as I've gone when I've been interviewing for roles, I've, you know, I've gone in with like, you know, hey, I've already, here's my 30, 60, 90 day plan as to, you know, what I'm going to go after when I come in here. So, you know, if you want to do that, I mean, I think Robert nailed it to say, you know, it is hard work. Uh, and, and, and like lay out that plan and, and paint the picture as to why you are best suited to do, uh, to take on this larger challenge at this new place. Yeah, that's that's great. Well, thank you so much to the panelists today. Such a diverse set of backgrounds. I definitely learned a lot, a lot of also great reminders. Um, so it was really interesting hearing from everybody across so many different industries. To everyone that attended or is attending, please definitely keep the conversation going on LinkedIn. Uh, make sure you're a part of the group and interact with uh, the panelists, myself, Jason, other people in this product coffee group across LinkedIn. Um, uh, thank you, everybody. And uh, Jason, I'll turn it over back to you. <laughs>